All right, it's Monday morning, and I bet a lot of you are dragging this morning. I was earlier, I admit, wishing uh, for a better night's sleep. Well, Dr. Rob Kamenarek, America's fitness doctor, is in with us this morning with a few steps to sleep more soundly. Dr. Rob, appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. Um, are you an advocate of the eight hours of sleep, less or more, or what? Does it depend on the person? It really depends on the person. Mm -hmm. Eight hours is a great mark to shoot for. So mm -hmm. if you can get to bed 10 o'clock, rise at six o'clock so that you're staying within a regular sleep, sleep schedule. However, it's the quality of the sleep that's more important that you get into deep sleep three to four times during your rest period. Okay. So for some people, you know, we were talking earlier, said, you know, I'm a five hour kind of guy. Right. And that means during that five hours, you're getting into deep sleep three or four times so that you're rising, feeling rested. For the average person, that's about eight hours a night to get to the three or four deep sleep periods to feel adequately rested and ready to go for the day. Interesting. Uh, some very specific tips that you have for us is don't go to bed hungry. Is that right? Well, going to bed too hungry mm -hmm. can, can disrupt your sleep cycle. So you do want to have something to eat. Uh, in the evening before sleep, but more importantly is to give three hours of break time before your last meal to when you go to sleep. Because overeating, drinking caffeinated products, too much soda before you go to bed will disrupt your sleep. Okay. And studies show that if you can have a period of fasting where you don't eat while you sleep, so if, say your last meal is 6 o'clock and you rise at 6 a.m., so 6 p. to 6 a., right. people live longer, healthier, less cancer risk. Really? Yes. Uh, you have rituals on the list, and that struck me as uh, what kind of rituals, rituals are we talking about? Lighting candles and <laughs> yeah. whatever. And, yeah. uh, what, what do you mean by rituals? Well, going to bed in your bedroom should be a safe place, a cool place. It should be dark. It should uh, be a relaxing environment. And if that means meditation, lighting some candles, some soft music, removing the electronics, getting rid of the cell phone, the computers, the television, getting rid of that blue light, which actually wakes up your brain. Because hmm. when we go to bed, we want to rest, we want to relax, we want to restore and rejuvenate our body. And we do that best when it's cool, dark, quiet. And repeat that ritual as yes, well. Okay. You got it. Um, the comfort station, um, I, does that go along with rituals? Just exactly. To create you that make environment. It comfortable. And then let's hop right to uh, no long naps. Now, I love long naps. Now, I, I need them for for the hours that I have. But you're saying it's actually not too good of a thing, right? You don't want to oversleep in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. What's really interesting is all the countries in the world take a break in the middle of the afternoon. They have siestas from two to I five. Like they they, cool, I'm all they for cool that. it off. Yeah. But in America, <laughs> what do we do? Oh, I gotta keep going, I gotta do more. Get the coffee, get the energy drinks. Right. Wrong thing to do, it really stresses your adrenal glands. It's better to take a short nap in the afternoon, say 20 to 30 minutes, recharge your body, rejuvenate it, That's a power and then nap. get back at it. But if you yeah. oversleep too long in the middle of the afternoon, you'll actually disrupt your sleep-wake cycle, and it'll make things harder for you later. That makes sense, because oftentimes the longer I sleep, the more tired I feel. It just Groggy. works in reverse. Yeah, good information. Thank good you, to sir. See you Appreciate it.